Hi, my name is Amanda Henderson. I'm the product line manager for LPDDR4 and 5 within Micron's Embedded Business Unit. Thanks for taking the time today to join me for this talk about LPDDR5. So in this presentation, I'll be giving a high level overview of what's new in the LPDDR5 technology, as well as comparing it to its predecessor, LPDDR4. I'll also give you an overview of which embedded applications are adopting LPDDR5 and why. So before jumping into the LPDDR5 technology, just one introduction slide to Micron. Micron is a global leader in memory and storage. Uh, we are the fourth largest semiconductor company in the world. We hold the number one position in automotive, networking memory, graphics memory performance, and we are first to market with LPDDR5 for mobile. So LPDDR5 is basically the latest generation of low power DRAM. In addition to being first to market with LP5 for mobile, we're also first to market with automotive grade LP5 on the 1Z technology and to offer ASOL B and D rated roadmaps that are ISO 26262 compliant and are a combination of process certification and innovative features. LPDDR5X will begin sampling in 2021, bringing in data rates up to 8.5 gigabits per second. What sets Micron apart is our dedicated regional technical customer support and architecture teams, as well as the use of our global customer labs with state-of-the-art equipment, fostering collaboration between your company and Micron from inception through execution. So now we'll jump into what's new with LPDDR5 uh, and take a look at uh, how it compares to LPDDR4X. So the LP5 JetX standard was released recently in 2019 versus LP4, which was released back in 2014. LP5 offers higher speed operation. And as we move from LP5 to LP5X next year, there's a data rate increase from current 6.4 gigabits per second LP5 up to 8.5 gigabit per second with LP5X as compared to its predecessor LP4X with a top speed of 4266 megabits per second. With LP5 comes an energy reduction by combining the increased data rates with a reduction in voltage down to 0.5 volt VDDQ versus LP4X, which is at a 0.6 volt VDDQ. There's a new clocking scheme introduced with LP5 that decouples the write clock signal, signal from host to device, from the read data strobe signal from device to host that allows the command and address bus to shift from single data rate in LP4 now to dual data rate in LP5. There's now a new flexible bank group that's introduced in LP5. 4, 8, or 16 versus LP4, which had a limitation of 8 bank only. With this comes larger densities that are supported by a 32 gigabit per channel ability in LP5 versus LP4 at 16 gigabit per channel only. All of this gives you enhanced reliability, availability, and serviceability, allowing LP5 to basically become the mainstream choice for high bandwidth, low power consumption. So let's take a closer look at the LPDDR5 bandwidth, being the sweet spot of higher bandwidth, more compute power, higher reliability at lower power. So the first chart on the left, this is your bandwidth on the Y axis versus DRAM packaged footprints on the X axis, including the technologies GDDR6, LPDDR5X, LPDDR5, LPDDR4X, DDR5, and DDR4. So a couple things to note in this chart is the very top bar is LP5X at the 8.5 fastest speed grade in our latest JEDEC 441 ball by 64 package. So that's the highest bandwidth per footprint available. Another th interesting thing to note is that on these other three colors, there's this light blue bar right in the middle 
and that's the LPDDR4X 4266 megabit per second, or as written here, 4.3 gigabit per second. In also um, an LP4 by 64 package, the 556 ball, that is right in the middle there, right? And it has a higher bandwidth actually than LP5 current speed, 6.4 gigabit per second in a by 32 package. So it is possible to accomplish a higher bandwidth with LP4X than this LP5 package. And that specific LP4, as an example, in the by 64 package has the same exact bandwidth as an LP5X fastest speed grade in a by 32 package. The red bar is actually directly underneath that light blue LP4X bar in the middle, so you can't see it. So over on the right is a bandwidth again on the Y axis versus die, so number of DRAM die, where this is unchanged even with the introduction of LP5X is GDDR6 is by far the highest bandwidth die. So here's a look at which embedded applications are adopting LPDDR5 for the higher bandwidth. In automotive, there's autonomous vehicles, advanced driver assist systems, or ADAS, increased safety features, enriched cabin experience, high-end in-vehicle infotainment systems, mass amounts of streaming from the cloud, industrial multi-market, you've got complex artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality workloads, growing sensor data at the edge, intelligent edge devices, high-end drones. In consumer, we're seeing next generation of cutting edge DSLR cameras. There's home automation, richer streaming content, um, AI interactive commerce, there's um, untethered virtual reality drives, as well as AR, VR, medical rehabilitation equipment. So all of these applications just requiring that next level of bandwidth and lower power. So thank you for joining me and taking that time. Um, hopefully you learned something new about LPDDR5 and how Micron can work with you on your next design. So for more information, you can visit micron.com. Take care.